A hairy, shirtless stalker hung around my small house by dead pallet. I used to live alone with my mother in a little ranch-style home in a small Christian community. We had very little, and sometimes had to survive on the kindness of others. We may do, but had to deal with an odd series of events because of someone that stalked our house. While this all happened, I remember slowly not feeling safe in my own home. I witnessed some things I hope my children never have to see. But despite all that, my mother did her best. Our town had one church, and pretty much everyone went to it, my mother and I included. My mother was clearly suffering from some kind of mild mental illness, and while the church was understanding of that, they were judgmental about other things. My mother counted on the church for a lot of things, until they found out about her side business. It's something I hate to talk about, because it makes me feel guilty. She did things for me. She did what she could to keep me fed, and while what I'm implying isn't pretty or glamorous, she was strong to put up with being degraded like that. Soon, we weren't welcome in the church, and of course, I had no clue why. It made things even harder. One day, it all began. It was the weekend, and I was home by myself. My mother was out working, and I was playing with Legos, as I often did. A knock came at the door, and I was instructed not to answer by my mom. So I continued to play and ignored it, but whoever it was just kept knocking. So I looked at the peephole, and... It was a shirtless man. He was dirty and hairy. So hairy, I couldn't see his face in the mess. I couldn't see below the waist, but he was clearly holding something with his hands down there. I went back to hiding inside and playing, a little weirded out. This was odd, but to my child brain, not too odd. What was odd was the fact that I could hear him rooting around the house, attempting to see if someone was inside. That was a red flag that something wasn't okay. When my mom arrived back home, she asked who had left an entire cooked chicken on our doormat. So I explained what happened. She always trusted whatever I said, and was obviously worried about such an odd event. To this day, I don't know if my mom knew the dirty shirtless person, but I'll most likely never know, as she's passed on now. And it wasn't something either of us wanted to talk about. It's important to note, I was instructed not to call 911, and my mom was careful to explain why. Since we were actively shunned by the church now, we didn't have access to a babysitter anymore. My mom would have been arrested for child neglect, and me taken away from her. I wasn't stupid either. I could look after myself, cook macaroni and cheese or ramen noodles. It wouldn't cut it today, but again, we may do. But after that event, my mom told me to use a kitchen knife if someone ever broke in, that it wasn't a toy, and she kept her handgun out of reach at all times. Now, this wouldn't be a stalker if incidents didn't continue. One morning, my mother was going to drive me to the bus stop when she noticed a bird's nest on the hood of her beat-up old yellow AMC Pacer. It was full of bird eggs, too. At first... I just thought the bird built it there. Of course, my mother explained that a bird wouldn't do that. Just build a nest on a car. I replied birds poop on cars, not make nests on them. Looking to my mother for a reaction to my joke, I saw that she was concerned about something before quickly putting on a smile and laughing. She said we would return the eggs to a tree after school and place the nest on the ground away from the driveway. Another morning... We found a path of wildflowers going from the doorstep to the car. It was a lot of flowers. It would have taken a long time to collect them, and a decent amount of time to place them as well. I mean, imagine like 20 feet worth of small, bright yellow, blue, and red flowers that curved slightly in an S pattern going from the door to the car door. It was absolutely captivating and fascinating to me. 
I still hadn't connected that this and the bird's nest was most likely that strange man. But I was beginning to see that my mother felt threatened by all of this nonsense going on. After having it explained to me, the wonder of the next gifts wasn't there. It was all just creepy. Bright red shoes that must have been dug out of some dumpster, clearly worn in, or left on the front step. Another day was a dented pot that was in bad condition. I can't forget the time that it was a little orange traffic cone. That was in the best shape of anything left there. There might be some I'm forgetting, but I didn't forget the dirty, old, rusted steak knife. That gave me a terrible feeling. But the worst was to come. While sleeping, I woke up to hear shuffling and banging about the house. It was all muffled, but there for sure. I remember thinking then and there I might die. Not a good thing for an eight or nine year old to have to come to terms with. I remember going back to sleep and hoping that I'd die in my sleep so it hurt less. But when I woke up, everything was normal. My mom must have not heard anything, or perhaps I really was dreaming. After eating cereal, we got ready to go to the car, hoping nothing was left for us outside. We'd have something left on our front step every day for a while now. The stalker hardly missed a day. Chicken bones, jars, leaves, anything really. But that day? Nothing. We got in the car and my mom noticed him in our rearview mirror. He was on the roof of our house. She wasted no time getting out of the car, pulling the gun out of her purse, and shooting him a few times. He died on our roof. I was told to stay in the locked car until the police arrived. I didn't get a good look at him while he was getting shot, but when I turned back around, I knew he was dead. My mom went inside the house and returned with something in her hand. She threw the knife he left us on the roof. When the police did arrive, they questioned me separately from my mom, asking if he was holding a knife when mommy shot. Without hesitation, I said yes, and that I was scared. Now, I should be clear, I'm fairly certain they didn't believe me or my mother. But no one was unhappy with the outcome. It's easy to sit here and criticize my mom, but... We had no clue what this dude was thinking. No idea if he was giving gifts to my mother or me. No idea how he'd react to the police or another man around my mom. I firmly believe my mother did the right thing. The things that happened with him not only gave me lifelong occasional nightmares, but trust issues for a long time. I'm sure having the first time you see a naked man, he gets shot, didn't help my psyche. Oh yeah, by the way, he was naked the whole time. So, there's that. So, in summation, my purse is loaded. A hairy, shirtless stalker hung around my small house was written by Dead Pallet. Narration by Emma Lohman. Editing, mastering, and original music by Abysme. Comprehensive links below. YouTube.com slash creepypasta is a collaborative channel. Please subscribe if you want to follow our content. If you want to support the channel, please consider liking, commenting, and sharing this video with like-minded members of the community.